So modernizing control net to Ethernet IP. As I said, uh, Ethernet uh, IP and control net share the common industrial protocol. And so it makes it, uh, it, makes it rather seamless to go from uh, control net to, uh, to migrate from control net to Ethernet. Um, control net has been around uh, for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of control net installed uh, in manufacturing facilities. Uh, it's a very sturdy network, uh, but the technology is rather outdated. Um, customers today, they're requiring a, uh, a converged network. So that's really the, uh, the theme for networking today is that it be converged, that we're able to get the data off of the control network, uh, diagnostic data and so forth, and get it moved up uh, to the enterprise network. Uh, turn it into information uh, for managers and uh, operators. Um, additionally, uh, we need wired and wireless technology uh, to enable that data connectivity. Uh, uh, and Ethernet, Ethernet applies itself to that. Uh, Long-term cycle support, Ethernet is going to be around for a very long time. Uh, uh, open protocol, Ethernet IP is an open protocol. Uh, anyone can implement it. Uh, and then open integration of standards such as uh, OPC UA. So all control net products are going active mature. That means in the life cycle management, Rockwell Automation's life cycle management, uh, control net products will be active mature. Currently, they are not active mature. So control net products are going to be around for a while. There's no need to panic, uh, but there is, it now is the time to uh, start planning uh, the migration. And uh, uh, what's really going to drive you to the migration, in my opinion, is productivity uh, and uh, not necessarily the uh, that control net is not being supported. So there are no end of life announcements uh, at this time for control net, but they are going active mature. But the, uh, the purpose of this discussion is to talk about the advantages and, uh, um, and then the method of the migration. So control net and Ethernet IP, uh, here's a comparison chart showing the two. Um, there's a lot more check marks on the right hand side for the Ethernet IP. So, Ethernet IP has many more features than ControlNet. And, uh, and in the future, there will be more features developed for Ethernet IP. ControlNet is pretty much uh, in an active, mature life cycle, which means that it is what it is. It won't be developed further, uh, but it will be available. Um, so ControlNet runs on RG6 coax, uh, Ethernet IP, we're running at high data rates with, uh, with CAT6 uh, uh, media. Um, wireless is not supported on ControlNet, it is supported. The nodes, we can get more nodes onto Ethernet IP up to 254. Um, 99 nodes is, is a stretch for control net. You know, typically we're looking at under 48 nodes on control net, but it is possible to get a larger number. Um, <clears throat> uh, diagnostics, uh, Ethernet IP is going to give us more diagnostics, going to give us more e network speed. Uh, determinism has been a big uh, argument between the uh, uh, the control net crowd and the Ethernet IP crowd. I think the determinism argument uh, was settled around the year 2005 with the advent of uh, the new Ethernet IP uh, switches with, uh, with uh, the MAC tables inside the switches and the features in the switches. Uh, provide plenty of determinism. I don't think there's any question in anybody's mind at this point that Ethernet IP can serve as a deterministic network. Uh, 
high availability. Uh, you know, we can have high availability with Ethernet. Um, uh, let's see, industrial security is a, is a big deal today. And industrial security uh, is more developed with, uh, with uh, Ethernet IP. SIP security is not offered on ControlNet. So ControlNet was uh, developed at a time when, uh, when security wasn't, industrial security wasn't even a question. And today it is a question. Uh, so integrated safety on Ethernet IP, multi-vendor support, uh, integrated motion on Ethernet IP, uh, and then all future developments uh, will be with Ethernet IP, not with ControlNet. So for those reasons, we would be moving uh, from ControlNet to Ethernet IP. Um, just offers a, uh, Ethernet IP just offers a more, uh, uh, a, a more uh, progressive network than control net in particular enabling security and the uh, iot convergence and, and diagnostics is a big thing we want diagnostics to uh, tell us before things have failed uh, that they're on the way of failing or if they have failed we need to know exactly what has failed and Ethernet provides us with uh, the diagnostics. Lots of reasons to move to Ethernet IP. The, uh, there are analogous uh, topologies uh, between ControlNet and Ethernet IP. Um, ControlNet used a trunk drop topology with terminating resistors on each end. So <clears throat> with control net, we would have a, a trunk, a central trunk, and then we would drop off of that trunk uh, to the devices. And that would be analogous to a linear topology in, in Ethernet IP. Uh, control net could be deployed as a star topology uh, using, uh, using uh, uh, repeaters. Um, and Ethernet, the start topology would of course be with, with Ethernet switches. So there are analogous topologies. And what these analogous topologies mean is that uh, you probably will not have to relocate hardware in order to do this conversion. Uh, usually to do this conversion, it would just be replacing the control net adapters with Ethernet adapters. Uh, here's a ring topology. Once again, we with control net we would deploy repeaters uh, to create that ring uh, with ethernet it could be created with a device level ring uh, or or a switch ring the uh, redundant media topology and control net we had uh, redundant media uh, that could be deployed as uh, as ethernet uh, uh, parallel redundant protocol prp topology uh, in which we have uh, two LANs, LAN A and LAN B. If LAN A fails, then LAN B uh, immediately takes over and there is uh, very little lost time, actually no lost time between LAN A and LAN B in the parallel redundant protocol. I think uh, Brandon Singh is going to be talking about parallel redundant protocol in a future tech talk. So. Uh, uh, so there is uh, Ethernet IP is just is more convenient. It's a more convenient architecture than Control Net. Control Net, uh, we have to set up. Uh, we have to make a lot of decisions when we're deploying Control Net. Uh, Control Net is a lot like Ethernet IP in terms of the Logix 5000 platform, but with Control Net, it is scheduled. So uh, we have to schedule the network. Ethernet IP, we do not have to schedule the network. But um, in, uh, in, and also in control net, when we schedule the network, one thing we have to watch out for is, uh, is uh, that make sure that we have enough unscheduled 
bandwidth on the network. So there was a such thing as scheduled bandwidth and unscheduled bandwidth, and we had to balance those two, uh, those two uh, aspects of control net. We don't really have to worry about that with Ethernet IP. Uh, we just have managed switches and uh, we drop our IO onto Ethernet and it just kind of runs. But um, control, uh, control Net will be with us for, and it will be supported. So there's no need to panic and run out, but it is a great idea to take uh, note of the uh, devices that are in your facility and, uh, and understand how that network would be converted to Ethernet IP in the future. We can do that. Uh, we can understand the cost. We can understand the, uh, the implications uh, to production and so forth uh, in that modernization process. So the steps are fairly simple to convert from control net to Ethernet IP. Um, one thing is to uh, uh, assess the system that you would like to convert and, uh, and take note of the various hardware that is on that network. And then we would convert uh, those adapters over to Ethernet IP hardware. Um, use for the uh, uh, Flex IO and Point IO, most IO uh, platforms have uh, an Ethernet IP adapter that is analogous to the existing control net adapter. So we would just need to, to uh, take note of that, uh, of that Ethernet, of that control net adapter and find the analogous Ethernet adapter. Then we convert the IO tree in uh, Studio 5000, um, align the tags with the new devices, rename them, uh, add the logic, verify any messaging, and uh, verify any produce consume tags. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so in converting uh, the project, migrating the project from ControlNet to Ethernet IP, first thing we would do is uh, open up the ControlNet project. And you can see that this is uh, Studio 5000, RS Logics 5000 image here in front of us. And uh, we see that this is a control net IO tree sample program. And down below in the IO configuration, we show uh, various control net adapters on the control net network. So the first thing you would do is uh, save that old project as a new project and, and give it a new name. So, uh, we would, in that case, we would have both the Ethernet project open and the control net project open. You keep both of those projects uh, open so in the future you can copy and paste from one to the other. Uh, delete all the control net devices. Uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, over to the right, you notice that there is uh, logic in the processor uh, and uh, uh, that logic references those control net devices. So we're going to take care of that in the future step here. Um, then we just add the Ethernet IP network adapters in, and we give them those adapters the control net adapter names. Um, and we will rename those in the future for the time being. We just give them the control net adapter names. Uh, so that it'll link up with the uh, uh, with the uh, I, uh, existing I/O in the project, and then when we add those Ethernet uh, IP adapters, uh, we need to set the IP address and the RPIs of those adapters. Then from there, from the old project, so we have the adapters in; they're set in place. From the old project we would just um, copy the IO under the analogous control net adapter in the old project. We would copy that and paste it into the new project. So you can see that uh, it's a fairly simple process. In this case, they took uh, some 1756 IO and pasted it underneath 
the 1756 EN2TR uh, adapter. Uh, then they had some flex IO, they pasted some 1794 flex IO uh, in underneath the 1794 AENTR. Uh, notice that those adapters are still named uh, 1794 ACNR. Uh, that will change that here in just a moment. And then they, uh, they cut and paste or uh, copied and paste from the old project to the new project for the, for the point IO. So it's just, uh, it's just copy and paste uh, at this point. Notice the names of the modules uh, will stay the same in, uh, in this. So we've got the, uh, the project, uh, the new project, uh, Ethernet IO project created. Uh, we put the Ethernet adapters, deleted the control net adapters, put the Ethernet adapters in to its place. And then we uh, copied uh, the IO from the old control net project over to the, uh, uh, to the Ethernet project. And now at this point, we're going to rename uh, the uh, the control net we're going to rename it to something that is that is uh, uh, Ethernet related. So it's uh, 1756 and 2 tr is is what it was re uh, renamed to, and as well as for the uh, Flex IO 1794 AENTR renamed, and then for the Point IO it's renamed uh, 1734 AENTR. So just uh, it was just a simple matter of of uh, creating the new project, uh, deleting the control net, uh, IO, adding in the ethernet adapters, and then copying and pasting the IO for those adapters from the old project to the new project. So uh, very, uh, very simple, straightforward process. And the reason we can do this is because control net and ethernet was handled very similarly uh, in the Logix 5000 processor. Additionally, there is a uh, control net to ethernet IP migration guide. So I would uh, recommend that you pull this publication uh, off of the Rockwell Automation Documentation Center and, uh, and read through it. And that is the story of migrating control net to Ethernet IP. Fairly straightforward process. I invite you to engage uh, the Reynolds Company specialist in your area uh, or account manager in your area to, uh, uh, to help with this deployment. We're always happy to help and consult with you on, on any of your applications, but uh, in particular this one. Uh, migrating control net to Ethernet. I thank everyone for joining today. Uh, and uh, let's see what we have. If we have any questions in the chat window? I don't see any questions in the chat window. So uh, please let us know if you have any questions and we will be happy. Uh, I've got one. Is this the same for all versions of con control processors and RS logics. Yes, it is. Uh, this all goes back to uh, uh, the architecture of Logix 5000, uh, the CIP protocol that is inherent uh, uh, of the uh, Logix 5000 processors. So please engage us with any questions uh, that you may have, and we will be happy to help. But it uh, looks like we're out of time. Thanks everyone for joining and uh, hope to see you in the future uh, on one of these Tech Talks.